done a live. So, um, I'd like to kind of communicate with everybody because there seems to be some real uh, cognitive dissonance that's occurring right now that I don't think people understand, right? During COVID, I began to develop relationships with doctors and healthcare providers all over this country, right? And the reason we did that is because we couldn't trust the media. We couldn't trust the CDC. We couldn't trust people that we, organizations that we had been told were trustworthy, right? So we started to communicate amongst ourselves to be able to build a stronger network and also to be able to pass information quickly, right? And in healthcare, it's really important that you know, if I'm working on a case or I see something and, you know, somebody in another state sees something, we're able to be able to communicate and share information, right? So, so I, want to I want you guys to understand what we do in healthcare to be able to stay on top of things, right? So this is not going to be found on your major media outlets. It's just not, right? And so trigger laws do affect people because doctors are afraid of having their licenses revoked. And when a doctor is afraid to have their license revoked, okay, they're not necessarily going to be in the best mental uh, and emotional capacity to be able to deliver life-saving procedures. This is not a drill. This is not, you know, nothing in those laws state anything about ectopic pregnancy, etc. And I don't want to sit here and debate with people who are realtors, who are in the financial sector, you're not in healthcare and, and, and call me whatever you want. Call me pretentious. Call me, oh, she thinks she's so much better. I don't really care at this point. I have dedicated my life to healthcare. I have studied it. I've studied uh, public health. I've studied public health policy. I treat people every single day. I hold their hands when they're afraid, when they're hurting, when they're in pain, when they've been to every doctor underneath the sun and nobody can figure out what's wrong with them. I treat them. I work with them. I sacrifice time, effort, energy, me. So I'm not going to debate this issue with anybody, period. I'm not going to debate with a realtor or any other professional who is not an actual healthcare professional. All of the healthcare organizations have come out and said absolutely no. The AMA, as much as I don't approve of most of what they do, have come out and said no, this is at risk. If there's a reason. There is a reason. There is a medical scientific reason. So when you guys were running around talking about follow the science, guess what? If doctors are not able to be doctors and they have to check with a legislator or a, or a legal team before they're able to treat people, now we have a problem. We have a public health problem. And I'm not going to argue that. I am so pissed right now. And I realize that I'm in stages of grief. I am sta in stages of grief for the women that are not strong enough to communicate. I am in stages of grief for the women who are angry and furious right now, who are unable to be able to communicate. Not everybody has a family. Not everybody has a support system. Not everybody has financial ability. But guess what? It is not a woman's obligation to feed into your fetish for fucking trauma porn because that's all it is. The fact that I have a choice over my body should be enough. The choice that when you guys were marching about, I don't want to have, um, you know, mandatory vaccines. Guess what? It's the same issue. It's called medical freedom. And I fight fiercely for medical freedom. Why? Because we should choose what goes in, the, in, in and around our body. If we own nothing in this life, it should be our bodies. I don't care if you're man, woman, if you think you're a cat. I don't care. I don't care. There are some inalienable, inalienable rights that we should have as human beings. Do not try to stuff your Bible down my throat. 
I have a very deep relationship with God. And it is not found in that book. It is your interpretation of what you think that God would think. But guess what? God doesn't judge. God doesn't sit there and, and, and cast stones against fellow man. God doesn't do any of that. He's never done any of that. But humans walk around thinking that they're oh holier than thou. And, and, and most of the people, it's not going to impact you. It's not going to impact you. I watched a rally of a lady who congratulated Trump for saving white lives. She said this, Mary Miller, look her up in Illinois. She said this on live television. Wake up. I'm not even in the, in the mental, emotional state to have a debate of any kind, especially with people that are not in healthcare. I'm not, I'm not. Because it's not you that is the one who's going to feel the impact of this. You're not gonna have to support any of these people through their emotional burdens. I'm in family practice. I see all kinds of families. I don't even know what I'm gonna walk into tomorrow morning. People are going to be in so many stages of grief. I, it's, it's incomprehensible. I'm getting information from other states about women bleeding out six hours. Six hours. This is not on the fucking media. This is not CNN. I'm not looking at Washington Post. I'm talking to healthcare people who are telling me what is going on. Get a grip. Get a grip. Wake up wake up. And if you think for a second that, oh, it doesn't impact me and it doesn't affect me, you just wait. You just wait. Taking away a privacy between a doctor and a patient and putting a legislator in the middle and saying that uh, me as a provider, me learning all of this information has nothing to do with a patient's safety. Patients, patients don't deserve informed consent. No, they don't deserve to be told. Doctors don't. We, we're just tools. We're just tools for the insurance companies. Forget it. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and debate with people who are not directly impacted by any of this. There have been life-saving procedures done. A 13-year-old who has been raped does not, in any shape or form, it should be obligated to carry a baby. Period. The, the impact on incest the impact on these, the impact on sexual trauma, when people have been traumatized, especially, you know, me, myself, I was molested at four, four years old. And I acted out that trauma for years until I was able to be conscious and present and heal myself. I'm lucky. So I, I really am not interested in listening to the diatribes about life because guess what? If it was about these babies, if it was really about these babies, there would be free health care, there would be support for women, there would be homes, there would be all kinds of things available. If it was really about that, no, it's about power, it's about control, it's about the fact that the white male population is dying off. And I don't say that lightly. I don't, but do not debate with me because you're not impacted in healthcare. You don't see this day in and day out. I have no idea what I'm about to walk into on Monday morning. I, I just am so at a loss that people are celebrating this and thinking that this is such a great thing. And oh my gosh, we just saved a whole bunch of you know, unborn babies. Well, guess what? Unborn babies are the perfect, you know, idealized, you know, mythical creature. Because as soon as they're born, guess what? They're going to have needs. They're going to have wants. They need support. They need things from you. I, I'm just so floored that people think that this is a good thing. And don't think for a second that you can silence me because I'm not silenceable. I'm not. I'm not going to stand by. I'm not a handmaid. I'm not a Martha. They would send me straight to the colonies because I'm not one of these people who are going to sit around and neither are the people in my generation. Mark my words. We're not just going to sit around and let our right white rights be stripped away piece by piece for the sake of what? For the sake of what? 
There is no, there, there is no deeper meaning and understanding except for power and control. And we need to get the, we need to get the population up. I'm just flabbergasted that so many people think that, you know, I should be polite about any of this. I'm not going to be polite. Sorry. It's not going to happen. If that's what you want, unfollow me. I don't care. Threaten me. I don't care. I, I really don't care at this point because there's, there's certain things that are more important than, um, me. This is so much bigger than me. Again, I've, de I've dedicated my life to healthcare and protecting people, people's right to choose. Just during all the, the vaccine mandates, you saw me just as loud. So why would you think I would shut up now? Why would you think that I would just, you know, lay, you know, lay down and roll over and say, oh, well, that's just different. It's not my job as a healthcare professional to judge anybody's situation. It's not. It's not my job to sway them either way. I give them informed consent. So I give them all of the benefits and risks and they ultimately make the choice. Period. So, you know, you guys can save it. I'm not going to be polite. I'm not going to be nice. I'm not going to tiptoe around your feelings. I'm not going to be anything other than my authentic passion itself. Because that's what you get with me. And you get somebody who's going to fiercely work like hell to ensure that each and every one of you maintains your rights over your physical bodies. Because if we own nothing in this life, we own our bodies.